Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. So, that was the end of the clansmen of Clan McCooligan under the blades of Macduff and his allies. But, uh, what happened next? What of the others? Och, well, just as the main gate fell, allowing the treemen and the McCumans to float into the courtyard, Prince Donald Bain, the prospector Arca's Oracle, Dart, the Earl of Harkness, and Sir John Quickshire burst out of the tower above the main gate and onto its uppermost level. From their high vantage point, they saw Macdeath and his closest confidants tearing through the last of the clansmen of the McCooligans and then turning to face the oncoming treemen and McCumans. But uh, they could also not help but notice the goblins above on the ramparts adjacent to them knocking their arrows and preparing to launch a volley at the fresh clansmen below. The dwarf, Arcus Oracle, immediately saw red at such a cowardly way of conducting battle. Into the yellow-bellied gobbles, I come down. And at this, the dwarf prospector and the last two remaining miners immediately ran towards the rampart to the right of the party, brandishing their bloody weapons for the cowardly, diminutive greenskins to see. The nearest began to turn to get away, but it was too late. Zargul leapt onto the longer rampart and began smashing in the skulls of each and every goblin in turn. Some leapt off the wall in their terror and fell to their deaths in the deep chasm surrounding the castle or into the courtyard itself below, breaking their legs. Others were pulverised by the dwarf's warhammer, their blood creating a slick gore upon the crenellations of the rampart. The very hardiest of the goblins stood firm and shot off the last of their arrows at the dwarves, but uh, those that struck Arker rather deflected away by the blistering speed and fury of his hammer, bounced off his armour, or the wounds they inflicted were simply ignored. His fellow miners, on the other hand, were uh, less hardy dwarves, and both eventually succumbed to the shots of their enemies, leaving the old prospector to finish off the last of the greenskins alone. This he did until he finally stood, silhouetted by the dawning sun, bloody but triumphant, having all but single-handedly taken the eastern rampart. His victory did not go unnoticed though, and Lady Macdeath called up to the dwarf. I'm sorry that your companions fell to such a lowly foe, but fear not, your fate will end better in fire and burning woe. And... With that, she hurled a fireball at Zargul, engulfing the wounded dwarf in flame and sending his burning body tumbling off the rampart and into the dark chasm below. Oh, by the gods, what an ignominious end. Damn all magic workers and their trickery. Ach! Oh, yeah, yeah, but of course I did not mean you, uh, Master Alchemist. Uh, merely um, those with um, a malicious intent. Uh, please, please, sir, continue. Ach, I see. Well, right here then. Anyhow, uh, back to our tale, eh? On the other side of the castle ramparts, from where Arca was killed, Prince Donald Bane was leading the charge against the goblins. Behind him came Dart and Quickshire, with his squire, Pangle, and the magician, Murgray, trailing behind. The heir to the throne was slashing and swatting goblins this way and that as he moved along the shorter rampart that led directly into the keep. The sneaky, spiteful goblins here too were backing away from Donald Bain and the others and uh, shooting off their arrows as they went. But uh, even though arrow after arrow struck the prince, much as they had done against uh, Arcus Oracle, most bounced off his armour harmlessly and confidence 
filling his breast, he turned to urge his companions on. Come, brave heroes of Albion, follow me into the keep of Macduff to come upon him from... But Donald Bain's luck didn't hold out, and as an arrow embedded itself into his thigh, he tumbled off the rampart. Fortunately for him, he fell onto the roof of the latrines in the courtyard below, and the wooden tile roof broke his fall. Unfortunately though, the roof immediately gave way under his weight, and he fell through it and into the foul, fetid depths of the shippet below with a nauseating splash. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Cedric. He fell into the what? The the shippet? The pit below where everyone goes to relieve themselves of, you know. Ah, I see. And no need to continue. I get it. I get it. Anyhow, what happened next was this. Donald Bain's companions quickly finished off the last of the goblins before returning to the hole in the roof of the latrines to peer into the darkness below. <coughs> my lord, my prince, Ooh, what a foul stink, but we must get to him, lest into the muck he sink. And so the wizard, Dart, Quickshire, and his squire, Sandra Pangle, ran along the wall to the keep, bursting through the door, racing through the reception rooms and back out onto the stone staircase that led down to the courtyard. It was now that the difficult part began, for between them and Prince Donaldbane, with the Macdeaths, Banquo and Spot, as well as their own allies, the Treemen and the clansmen of McClan McEwen. Harkness, Quickshire and Pangle all ran down the steps towards Macdeath, but initially couldn't get near to him due to all the uh, clansmen doing the same. Mere Grey, though, stepped back into the shadows, for he'd spotted something strange taking place near the hole down into the latrine. For the heroes of East Albion and Clinty and his gang were not the only people to have reappeared at that moment. And upon seeing Donald Bain fall into the latrine, the murderess, Julia McEwen, had broke from the shadows of the guard tower over the main gate and dove in after the prince, leaving the bewildered Yorickson and an even more bewildered Fergus standing on the main gate. Yorickson quickly followed, but Fergus shook his head and walked away. His fellow clansmen were fighting below, and he was not one to miss a fight. Back in the fight in the courtyard, Clinty and his fellow treemen bellowed at the king. As Clinty spoke, around the tree lord's feet swarmed the McEwen clansmen, and they spread out to fill the courtyard, isolating each enemy from each other. Upon seeing his brethren do this, Fergus ran down the spiral staircase of the gatehouse, kicked open the door and joined them, pushing past his clansmen and immediately catching the eye of the frenzied Banquo. Ugh, you're the big old Jimmy, ain't ya? I'll have you. Away and bail your heed, you fun done bumpoot. And with their pleasantries exchanged, the two threw themselves at each other. But uh, it was not a fair fight, for as Banquo turned his attention to Fergus, the swords of the three clansmen he'd already been fighting pierced his torso and dug deep. Just as Fergus himself twisted around, swinging his mighty blade and neatly cutting off the head of the impaled Banquo, causing Macdeath to call out. Banquo! But he had no time to mourn, for Clinty and his treemen were already striding past the McEwmans out of the body of Banquo and preparing to launch themselves at Macdeath and his surviving allies. The nearest threw itself at spot but 
The beast leapt out of the way and both its heads breathed two plumes of fire at the treeman. The unfortunate treeman's desiccated bark burst into unholy fire immediately and he began thrashing about, swiping the clansmen off their feet and dashing them against the walls before it finally tumbled onto the old dray and caused it too to become engulfed in flame. The two old horses that had been strapped there got free as the leathers that had held them in place caught fire and broke. And in their panic, as their tails and manes were flaming, so they trampled to death numerous clansmen before eventually being cut down and put to rest. It was at this point that Clinty decided that Spot, the dog, was clearly too dangerous to let live a moment longer. And he and one of the older treemen grabbed the beast by its paws and the two pulled it apart gouts of fire and flame pouring from its body as its flesh was ripped and torn apart. And the two portions of the chaos hound sprayed caustic demonic blood all over the courtyard. Lady Macbeth screamed in anger as her pet was drawn and hard and she herself hurled a fireball at Clinty and the treeman that had helped him. This lit them up like bonfires and left them thrashing about on the muddy ground. The morning rain sizzling as it struck their burning bodies. The two remaining treemen wasted not a moment and rushed the witch, stumbling over the burning body of Clinty to get to her. They themselves too unwittingly catching fire. Lady Macbeth tried to call upon her magics but her fingers merely fizzled. Her magic was spent. I curse you, Saint Weaver. Why have you abandoned me in my time of need? She then cast a loving gaze at her husband, who was, at that very moment, cutting his way through clansmen, and their eyes met one final time, just as the flaming fists of the two treemen pummeled her into a bloody mass of flesh and organs, before they themselves crashed over into the keep their burning bodies setting a light to the castle itself. Macdeath fought to try and reach his wife. My love. But found his way blocked by the murderer of Banquo, Fergus McEwman. Oh, the king, you've a face like a skilled ass. Let me take your mind off your loss. And at that, the few remaining nearby clansmen fanned out to form a circle around the king and Fergus. I warn you, long shanks. No man or woman born can harm me. So why don't you take your best shots? At Macdeath's words, Fergus roared and threw himself at the king. But Macdeath neatly cleaved off his sword arm with the elbow as he sidestepped the bruiser. Arm, my arm, you fucking darn bullpot. I'm not finished yet. Next, I think I'll help myself to that other arm. You won't be needing it no more. And with that, he cut off Fergus's other arm at the shoulder. <laughs> Washed up now, you warrupper. Show me what you got. Ha! What do you think you're gonna do? Kick me to death? I don't think so. And at that, Macdeath cut off the McEwen's legs at the knees. <laughs> With what? Harsh language? Or are you gonna bite my knees off? I don't think so. Not without a head, you're not. And with the final slice of his blade, Macdeath took off Fergus's head. The surrounding McEwmans 
stood in shock for a moment. But this quickly dissolved into anger and they charged the king en masse. Death. 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 Death.